Hi, I'm Gary White for Central Kentucky Television. I'm here with Sister Claire McGowan, who's with the New Pioneers for Sustainable Future in Washington County. And we've been talking with Sister Claire for several months now about the Bluegrass Pipeline that we've had on here. I think it started like last spring, when it had been the first time we got some notification about the possibility of a natural gas pipeline going through a natural uh, gas yes. liquid pipeline, pipeline, right, going which is through quite different. Uh, central Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk a little about how that's coming along, and there's some stuff going on right now that we want to let people know about. Mm -hmm. uh, first, we want to say uh, that the new pioneers in your organization is opposed to the pipeline mm -hmm. going through, correct? Mm -hmm. Tell us why you feel that way. The, there's a great deal of danger connected with this pipeline, Gary. Um, the, it is, people think, well, we have all these natural gas pipelines in Kentucky and it's not a big problem. The difference is, this is the first time we will ever have a huge natural gas liquids pipeline. The material in it is much more dangerous than natural gas for two reasons. One, it's more explosive, and two, it's heavier than air. So if there were to be a leak, 80% of it would go downhill to the lowest point and as soon as the, there's the slightest bit of a spark, it's in a major explosion. The other 20% would remain in liquid form and would go down into the water supply. And because Kentucky is karst, largely, karst is limestone, that's why we have all the caves in Kentucky. And at the bottom of all those caves is our water supply. So wherever there are springs coming up from the ground, they're coming up from the karst caves underneath. If this stuff were to leak and to get into the water supply, we'd never get it out. So um, it's, it's the danger to human health and to the, all of life, the animals and the, pl and the plants, the soil, anything around a leak, the, the soil would be ruined forever. So um, it's, it's extremely risky to put, this is a 24 inch pipeline, so that's the size of a big trash can. And it's going to carry 440,000 barrels a day, 440,000 barrels a day of these toxic liquids through Kentucky. That's, that's barrels, so it's over a million gallons a day through Kentucky at a pressure of 1,400 pounds per square inch. Your, your tires on your car are 30 pounds a square inch. So we're talking about extremely high pressure, extremely high volume, a huge pipe and from what we've gathered what we've been able to learn from the pipeline company they are not using the highest quality pipe they're using a pipe that has a weld all along the length of it and so you have a riskier situation with the pipe itself um, so we don't see any um, any value certainly not to Kentuckians that's worth the level of risk that this pipeline entails okay so, as we said, <coughs> it's been several months that this has been in discussion, the possibility. And what is coming up now is whether the company who wants to have this pipeline go through Kentucky could possibly use eminent domain in order to have that happen. Because mm -hmm. they've been, for several months, trying to buy up pieces of land from people or rent uh, areas or what have you so that they can bring their pipeline through individual property owners. Mm -hmm. And they have had some success with doing that through mm -hmm. a large portion. But now, uh, as that's getting more difficult, they're looking at other options potentially, and one of them was, can they use eminent domain to make that work? Mm -hmm. There's some people who feel that is possible, some who don't. You're asking for help from the public to have some legislation enacted, right? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, let me back up a little bit. The company from day one, the first time I heard them speak, which was at Nelson County Fiscal Court, mm -hmm. stated that they would have the right to use eminent domain in Kentucky. Since then, the Attorney General, several of our top lawyers, the head of the Public Service Commission, all of them have said, no, they don't have that right. But they're continuing to say that they do, and that serves as a, a club to use on a landowner. Because if, if I want to cross your land and you say, no, I don't really want that kind of pipe on my land, I can say to you, well, Gary, you might as well go ahead and sell it to me now at the price I'm offering you because I can take it anyway from eminent domain. That's going to scare you. Whether or not you have the right to use eminent domain 
it ends up being a club against a lot of landowners. So the protection that we need um, is twofold. One is that through the Kentucky Resources Council, we have a case in the courts trying to do a test to ask the courts to rule and say that eminent domain cannot be used for this purpose in Kentucky under our present laws. But then the second effort is to try and get clearer and stronger legislation from the state um, assembly that's in session right now to make sure that our legislation is real clear that absolutely they may not use eminent domain for this purpose. Eminent domain is supposed to be for the public good. So roads and utilities, yes, we probably need eminent domain for things that really serve the public good. But a private corporation running a pipeline for the sake of their profit is not a public good. So um, the legislation um, effort right now, there are three potential bills that have been written. Um, Senator Higdon's bill is the one we consider the strongest, and that is um, Senate Bill uh, let me see. Um, Senate Bill 14. Um, so what we've asked people to do is to call the legislative message line. That's at 1-800-372-7181. And express your support. Ask them to give this message to everyone in our state legislature. Um, express your support for the strongest bill possible that will prevent the use of eminent domain for natural gas liquids pipelines. And the person who answers the phone there at the Capitol is lovely, and all she does is ask you your name, address, um, and you give your message, and she gets it to everybody that you want to get it to. So that's one thing that people can really do. We've been um, using email, our new pioneers email list over the last 10 days, and we've gotten, from what the responses that I've received, we've gotten at least 100 calls made. But we need a whole lot more calls than that made because what we've discovered lately is that the, the pipeline company has hired people to make robocalls, you know, recorded telephone calls, that tell the person who answers the phone what a wonderful thing the Bluegrass Pipeline is for Kentucky, and then says, would you mind staying on the line and connects them directly into the legislative message line. So some legislators have said that the calls are running 10 to 1 in favor of the Bluegrass Pipeline. And we all know legislators pay a lot of attention to how their calls come in. They say every call they receive represents at least 50 voters in their district. So if, if they're getting 10 to 1 calls in favor of the pipeline, that's going to have a whole lot of weight. So Ordinary citizens like us really need to pick up the phone. It takes about a minute to make that call and try and persuade our legislators that we absolutely, and this seems to cross party lines and all kinds of differences, Kentuckians do not want eminent domain used for private profit. I mean, that is to take people's land away from them for the sake of some corporation that wants to make money is just not acceptable. And the uh, the company is saying that it will ultimately go towards uh, the public good is their rationale for eminent domain right. but uh, but right there's there's going to be no home heating gas out of this line there that that the the gas that's natural gas that we buy gets taken out at the mo at the place where they do the extraction so there's no natural gas in there you can't some a man who sold his right of way said he was going to be able to hook his house onto the line and get free gas to heat his house. That's ridiculous. There is no natural gas in this line. So, so right now, that's what the uh, new pioneers and what people are asking if you call regarding Senate Bill 14 and learn some more. And if you do want to hear some more, uh, Sister Claire did reference a Nelson County Fiscal Court meeting that took place earlier in 2013. And we do have that on our website and on our YouTube as well, that you can watch that entire meeting. And they do have representatives from the pipeline as well there mm -hmm. at a CH6 television on your YouTube channel or channel6tv.com. Mm -hmm. So you can find out some more about all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. yep. So that's, that's a good reference.